Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Okay, this is my entire BA thesis, so I'm going to try to condense it. Basically, Christian archaeologists have completely destroyed most of history that we understand. So they went into areas that they didn't belong, and they dug up all the artifacts in lands that didn't belong to them, and they changed all the narratives to fit Christian ideology. My specific area of expertise is in goddess cults. So if you look at like goddesses throughout times, like the depictions of them have been really, really drastically changed by the people that found the areas and the artifacts that belong to the goddess cults. And we now no longer see ancient women as extremely complex people that held power in society and were goddesses of war, goddesses of filth, had multiple abortions, and were super slutty, and it was tight. No, they're fertility goddesses, all of them. All of them are now just fertility goddesses, and that's completely incorrect. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Corsets weren't bad for you, and they weren't tools of the patriarchy. They were literally just breast support. Corsets were built to support the breasts from below, distributing their weight across your torso, unlike modern bras which lift them upwards and put the weight on your shoulders and upper back. Their purpose was not to make you look skinny or like you have big boobs, that was more or less a side effect. No, the ideal and or average waist was not 18 inches, that is exceptionally small. It's just that many surviving corsets tend to be small because they have less fabric and are less likely to be repurposed into other garments. Women did not get ribs removed to fit into their corsets. Surgery was extremely dangerous at this time and is not worth the risk for fashion. Corsets can shift your ribs and organs, but not permanently. Tight lacing was considered dangerous and was only done on very special occasions, maybe once or twice a year. If you're talking about the 18th or early 19th century, that's not a corset, it's a pair of stays. They have different construction. Historical women weren't dumb. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? St. Patrick was not Irish. Beethoven wasn't black. Non-white people lived in ancient Greece and Rome. Columbus did not discover America, nor did he prove that the Earth was round. In fact, since the Middle Ages, most people were well aware that the Earth was not flat. Napoleon really wasn't that short. Ninjas didn't run around in black pajamas. They wore clothes to blend in with everybody else. Marie Antoinette never said, let them eat cake, and in fact, by many accounts, she was very generous. Only 20 people were put to death in the Salem Witch Trials, 19 women and one man, and none of them were burned at stake. The women were all hung, and the man was crushed to death with stones. The Emancipation Proclamation didn't free anybody. It was directed at states that weren't listening anyway, and then we kind of had a war over it. Sorry to anyone who was told this to make them feel better, but no, Albert Einstein never failed math. He was brilliant at math. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? I'm so glad you asked. Many people waited to get married historically. In fact, the average age for women in 18th century France to get married was 27. This is because girls often left their homes at around age 12 to work and save money for marriage. Which brings me to my second point. Women have always worked outside the home. Only the 1% didn't work. Historically, textiles were the second largest industry in the world after agriculture, and they employed many women. It took the Vikings six weeks to build an entire ship, but two years to spin and weave the sails, which is why the most expensive thing the average household owned was their bed linens. Yes, more expensive than their bed. A primary reason for the Industrial Revolution was to make textiles faster and cheaper, but the quality has been declining ever since. Things that used to last several lifetimes now only last a few months. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? The Eurocentric narrative revolving around the conquest of the Americas is that European colonizers defeated indigenous populations because they were somehow inferior. But in Eduardo Galeano's book, Open Veins, he proves that the only thing the colonizers had that was superior were their germs. As records suggest that every time conquistadors would clash with indigenous populations, before these populations were exposed to the illnesses that the conquistadors used against them, the conquistadors would always lose. Which is why Cortes' attempts to take Tenochtitlan often failed. That is, until a year later, when two-thirds of the Aztec population died because of European smallpox. The biological warfare that conquistadors actively use is widely considered to be the most lethal use of germ warfare in history. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? I'm so glad you asked. The Victorian caged crinoline was not an oppressive garment as many people believe today, but was actually considered a feminist invention of the time. Before it was invented, women had to layer on heavy petticoats on top of one another to achieve the very fashionable voluminous shape. Altogether, these petticoats could weigh up to 14 pounds, which limited so much movement for women. 
The caged crinoline, in contrast, was made of steel, and it was very light and allowed women to move their legs freely underneath their skirts. The caged crinoline was also cheap and accessible and allowed poor women to partake in the same voluminous fashion trend as richer women. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Most of the slaves that were brought to the Americas were not sold by other Africans. While the transatlantic slave trade did begin in West Africa because there was already a thriving slave market there, the demand in the Americas quickly outstripped the supply. A lot of the peoples that went to the Americas were actually kidnapped off of their ship. The slave traders would actually practice piracy and kidnap them to send them to the Americas to sell. The sheer number of people that they took from the West African coast devastated many of the societies that existed there. One of the most heartbreaking things I have ever read in my entire life was a letter from Alfonso I, the ruler of the Kingdom of Congo, begging the Portuguese king as a brother in Christ to stop the kidnapping of his people because it was destroying his nation. This is a myth that needs to die. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? Most prehistoric societies didn't get most of their food from hunting. The man the hunter hypothesis was a theory created by misogynistic, egotistical men in the 20th century. Granted, we do mostly only find bones from that period of time, but a small amount of understanding of preservation bias would solve that problem. We mostly find bones because they survive a lot better than plant remains do. But the men decided to take it and turn it into some kind of big ego trip about how men went out and hunted whilst women and children stayed at home and they were the providers of the family. So yeah, if you ever come across a guy who's trying to use this to prop up the patriarchy, which I definitely have, um, you can now prove him wrong, which I have to say is really satisfying to do. <laughs> Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? I really hate that in American mainstream education, the British colonization and rule of India is taught as something that just happened and then ended. They're like, oh, we're in India. I got a diamond. Bye. So you're just not going to include the part where India was worth 23% of the entire world's GDP, but only worth 3%, less than 3% after the British left. The British put the South Asian subcontinent under drugs, stole spices, tea, the biggest diamond in the world. The British royals and Britain still has it, celebrating their colonization, I should say. They shipped Indians to the Caribbean islands to become slave laborers under the false promise that they would return home once their work was completed to see their families. Enforced Christianity, created divides in the nation, separated Hindustan, and left India a third world country. That bothers me. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? The USSR, <coughs> the USSR was not communist. They still teach this in my school's history lessons. It, it wasn't communist, it was a state capitalist country. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? John Brown was not a crazy person um, that wanted to massacre people. If you grow up in the uh, United States, especially in the South, um, this is sort of the conception that you receive um, of John Brown is that he was just a crazy man. In reality, he had a pretty well thought out plan um, and his goal was to free the slaves. He was one of the few people that thought that black people and white people were actually true equals. Not even Abraham Lincoln thought this. And so in 1859, he decides he's going to raid Harper's Ferry, um, a weapons depot in what is now West Virginia. During this raid, um, over 20 slaves um, are freed from nearby plantations um, and actually come and join him in this fight. And his goal here was sort of uh, a staging ground for what he thought was the second American Revolution. Take weapons from the United States, run to the Appalachian Mountains, start a guerrilla war um, with the United States until slavery is ended. He had written a constitution and planned to make Frederick Douglass the president. You should look it up. Hey, what are some historical misconceptions that- Any Genovese in the bystander effect, please listen to your wrong abouts episode on this. They cover way more than I ever could, and this is how I found out about this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's based on a 1964 story where a woman named Kenny Genovese was murdered in public, and that 38 people saw this, and this is why cities are heartless, because nobody helped her, etc., etc. Number one, she was murdered in the middle of the night. Only a handful of people saw. Number two, it wasn't that public of a place, and 911 wasn't a number back then. And there's a lot of social aspects to this. Kenny Genovese was a lesbian. Her friend that did witness the murder was scared to call the police because he was gay and scared of what they would do to him. Her girlfriend was harassed by the police afterwards. This murder also helps fuel the white flight to the suburbs, especially if you race her personality and sexuality. Hey, 
What are some historical misconceptions that really annoy you? I'm not sure if this counts as a misconception, but the topic of gender fluidity and there being more than two genders is not a new conversation. It might be new to Western societies that have been built from gender binaries, but for a lot of indigenous and foreign cultures, it's been a topic of discussion for centuries, and a widely respected conversation at that. The idea or acceptance of people who are two-spirited or those who don't fit into a binary have been introduced to indigenous cultures of North America and the Pacific for a while, also Southeast Asia, also ancient Egypt, and also ancient Greece, so I guess not all Western civilizations are exempt. In India, a lot of their mythologies and ancient scriptures refer to there being more than one gender. Some scriptures stating that there is as many as 20 to 28 different genders. The sad part though is that a lot of this information in history has been erased or looked over due to colonization. Gender is a social construct, so it shouldn't surprise us that it's been reconstructed in different cultures in different ways.